This is the 5 minute guide to the Iowa class battleships of the United States Navy. Okay, so we're on to the individual battleships of the class. The Iowa was obviously the lead battleship of the class, ordered in July 1939, laid down almost a year later in June 1940. Just over two years after that, she was launched on the 27th of August 1942, and it would be another year before she was fully ready for service. So it wasn't until August 1943 that she headed out for her first operational mission. This would be a short hop to base out of Canada's Atlantic ports as a guard against a possible sortie from the Tirpitz, which was operating in Norwegian waters, but it was thought might have tried to pull off another Bismarck-like voyage. Her next mission was to carry President Roosevelt and numerous other senior American officials to Algeria on their way to the Tehran Conference. It was on this voyage that the ship was almost torpedoed by the USS William D. Porter, see our other video on that particular ship, although the ship evaded and was not damaged. She would return the President to the US homeland toward the end of that year. The start of 1944 saw the battleship transfer to the Pacific Ocean, with her first combat operation being in support of the campaign to take the Marshall Islands, and then strikes against the Japanese naval base at Truk. Alongside her sister USS New Jersey, she sank the light cruiser Katori during follow-up strikes on the Mariana Islands as it, the Katori attempted to escape from the attacks on Truk. Heading back to the Marshall Islands for bombardment operations, she was actually hit by two Japanese 4.7-inch shells from coastal defences, but with little damage. The next few months saw the ship supporting airstrikes against numerous island chains, including the Carolines, Wake Island, Saipan, and Guam. In June, the Battle of the Philippine Sea saw the Iowa shoot down a total of four aircraft as part of the fleet defence against incoming Japanese attacks. Attacks against Okinawa and the Philippines followed, but at Leyte Gulf the ship was part of the force taken against the Japanese Northern Force, and so unfortunately she missed the chance to fight the centre forces Yamato at the Battle of Samar, and annoyingly the news of that particular engagement caused her to turn back just before she brought her guns into range of the Northern Force's ships. After some screening operations, she set sail for the west coast in December 1944. Towards the end of the year, the ship and the rest of Task Force 38 faced an unexpected enemy in Typhoon Cobra, which caught the fleet whilst it was trying to rearm and refuel. Three destroyers were actually sunk with all hands, a cruiser, five aircraft carriers and three more destroyers suffered serious damage, and a total of 790 men and 146 aircraft were lost. The Iowa herself didn't lose anyone, but damage to one of her prop shafts meant she needed to head home for repairs. One of the admirals later commented that the Typhoon had actually done far more damage to the US fleet that year than the Japanese had managed in any single engagement. She was back in the combat zone after four months alongside some of her sister ships to take part in the bombardment of targets on the Japanese home islands, and she would be present at the surrender of Japan, which took place aboard the USS Missouri, uh, which of course is another Iowa-class battleship. After this, she would be part of Operation Magic Carpet, taking Allied troops home. Now this is where the story of most warships that we review usually comes to an end. But, as one of the most modern battleships in the US Navy, she was kept operational after the war, including a live fire exercise where her guns actually failed to sink the old battleship Nevada, uh, before she was deactivated finally in March 1949. Only to be almost immediately reactivated in 1951 to take part in the Korean War, where she spent the better part of two years shelling industrial and military targets all along the North Korean coast, as well as tactical artillery support assisting the US Army's 10th Corps. In total, she fired just under 17,000 main and secondary battery rounds, sometimes to spectacular effect when they landed in enemy ammunition dumps. After a number of cruises supporting NATO forces, she would be put back in reserve again in 1958. This time her rest was somewhat longer, and it wasn't until 1982 that President Reagan's commitment to a 600-ship navy saw the Iowa reactivated. At this point she lost all remaining small-caliber anti-aircraft guns and two of her 5-inch turrets in exchange for Harpoon and Tomahawk missile launchers, Phalanx CIWS systems, and RQ-2 drones, as well as modern radar and fire control systems. This process took two years, although she took part in numerous exercises during the 1980s, her material condition was actually quite poor and she was almost taken out of service, earning a last minute reprieve for major repairs to be carried out to her aging engines and other primary systems. In 1988 she took part in escorting tankers during the Iran-Iraq war, 
Uh, but in 1989, whilst on a training exercise, she suffered an explosion in the super-firing forward turret, and only very prompt flooding of the magazines prevented catastrophic destruction of the ship. Eventually, after some politicking, the investigation showed that this was probably the result of poorly stored gunpowder charges, which had been neglected, along with other issues, to get the ship back into service. One of these had actually degraded to the point it had spontaneously detonated. As a result of all this damage, she was deactivated almost as soon as the USSR collapsed, and so she missed the Gulf War. Because of the damage, she was planned to remain struck from the naval register until 1999, when the New Jersey was made a museum ship, and she came back into the active reserve until 2006. In 2010, the ship was finally found a home as a museum ship in Los Angeles, opening formally to the public in 2012, where she can still be visited today. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below.